I always hate doing these videos. This is an autopsy. What is it we do in the red pill? We swap notes. Now I'm sure people have heard all kinds of different stories about us, but I'm here to give you a glimpse inside the locker room. Here we're going to discuss the field reports that happened a few years back. Brand new guys who are trying to learn the strategies that we talk about. We built a set of working strategies based on the experience of hundreds of thousands of men. Men swapping notes, iron sharpening iron. Welcome to the locker room. A former pro-Australian rugby player took out his wife and three young children in an apparent horrible event, according to law enforcement officials in Australia. 42-year-old Rowan Baxter, who played for the New Zealand Warriors in the National Rugby League, was found in his car early Wednesday morning along with his wife, two young daughters, and son. The kids were six, four, and three. The officials believe that Baxter doused the car with gasoline and set it on fire. Witnesses say they saw Baxter's wife trying to escape while yelling. Narcissism is a funny thing. So humans all have it to some extent. And for the most part, the traits of narcissism are masculine traits. The problem comes when they get too far outside of the norm. And that's a situation they call narcissistic personality disorder or antisocial personality disorder. In this case, a narcissistic fantasy describes persons who are within that narcissistic personality disorder window where the narrative structures they create in their head are not tied to reality. Humans think of things as narratives. It's the way we were before we even developed language and were hardwired for it. Everything we think and everything we anchor our decisions to are based on stories. That's why stories are such powerful tools. The problem comes, and for most people with healthy levels of narcissism, what we do is our narratives change based on our situation. So let's take an example like this, a tragic one, but let's dial it down to a normal situation. A healthy person decides to leave and take the kids. The guy stops thinking about his narrative as in I'm the perfect family man, superstar athlete with the doting wife and wonderful children. And he changes his narrative to be one of I'm the divorce guy now. I got to take care of my kids, but the wife is going to have them. Got to fight for custody, that sort of thing. The problem with fantasies, and this is the part that you want to take away from this. When a guy has his ideal fantasy or his narrative structure in his head, and he just expects other people to adhere to it, he stops looking at human beings as separate creatures. He looks at them as if they're extensions of his narrative. If you think of our life like you think of a play, this guy most likely looked at his wife and his children not as people or human beings. He looked at them as set pieces. And that's a problem because once you dehumanize people, it allows you to do situations like this, which are absolutely horrible, and yet still keep in your head that he most likely thought he was a good father and this was everybody else's fault. And it's not a healthy way to go through things. And that's for obvious reasons. Consequences aren't the same for men and women. It's not a bug, it's a feature. Back when we were developing our hard wiring that you're using today, the tribes that ended up, and this is Paleolithic and before then, the tribes that used to treat women with less consequence and more protection tended to survive over the years. So it was a personality trait or a mental model that we selected for over the ages. So nowadays, we have an innate bias towards women and against men. And we wouldn't be here today if we didn't have it. So you can sit here and say it's not fair and it's not equal, but I'm not a commie, so I don't really care about that. Whether you like it or not, that's the way people are hardwired, and so you need to act accordingly. Child custody is one of those things that automatically favors the girl. Now, there is changes happening, but there's always going to be that innate bias. It's our biological hardwiring, and you have to be aware that women generally experience less consequence, especially when it's guys on the other end in the legal profession, judges, lawyers, police officers, and this stuff's been documented. They just have the ability to do a lot more things to guys with less consequence than the reciprocal. 
If you're not able to accept this, and here's the problem, if you want to think of things as everybody should be fair and even, well go back to that narcissistic fantasy I put on earlier, and think about the kind of guy who thinks men and women are fair and treated equally. Well the problem is, in cases like this, and guaranteed he's having a contentious custody battle, or he had one, guaranteed he thought of this same mental model, we're equal, the kids should be equal, she disagreed, and he was most likely having issues with this. This one, this is important. So we already know about narcissistic fantasies, we already know about consequences. Put these things together, most people will end up having some form of pushback from it. Now there's a difference between narcissistic rage and anger. Anger is a social emotion. You stub your toe, you get hurt. If somebody stubs your toe, you get angry. It's your way of signaling to the person that there's a grievance and they should address it. Narcissistic rage isn't that. It's more limbic brain. It's something almost uncontrollable. Best example I can think of is a two-year-old having a temper tantrum on the floor. You cannot reason with them. They're not signaling anything. They're just experiencing an immense amount of rage and they just have to express it. That's because children at two years old don't have the cognitive function yet to be able to manage their emotions. The problem comes if you have narcissism to like a third standard deviation, you have that antisocial personality disorder. You also have an inability to manage these emotions when your narcissistic fantasy gets rewritten and people aren't adhering to your script. In this case, this 10 out of 10 situation, absolutely horrible. But most of us are going to have this to a 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7th level out of 10. Instead of doing this kind of situation, a lot of guys will find that their fantasies are being crushed and so they'll turn to alcohol or to depression or all kinds of things. The point is, the more caught up in your fantasy you are, the more uh, extreme rage you're going to experience. Now, thank God, most people just do a 5 out of 10. Maybe a guy will hit alcohol problems. Maybe he'll have anger issues with his wife and it never gets to this point. But these 10 out of 10 situations really highlight what the consequences can be and you really should be aware of it. My advice for this guy, I don't have advice for this guy. This guy, he's a monster and there's really nothing you can say to change that. The girl, she may have done a whole bunch of horrible things to him, but at the same time, like, this is where it is. There's nothing we can do to change it now. So my advice is going to be for the kind of people watching this. And, because of the old news adage, if it bleeds, it leads, everybody is watching this. Everybody is looking at this. Girls are watching this like it's a Netflix special on serial killers. Guys are looking at this as an outrage. As this is what happens when Karen tries to take the kids. But they're looking at it from the wrong angle and they're taking the wrong lessons from it. Girls, take what you want from it. I will say this though, being aware that if you are running too much off of emotions, too much of punishment on your husband, attacking his narrative fantasies like this, some form of action like this could possibly happen. And so sometimes it's really nice to be the bigger man, play nice, and act. Because, I mean, it is the, still the father of their children. You want to treat him well. More importantly, though, from the guy's side, you need to understand that rolling with the punches is more than just like a, a cheer up, bucko euphemism. It's a survival strategy. Not just for you, but for your potential family. And if you already have a family, so that your family can grow up. Because I did say earlier, do you want to be a good dad or do you want to raise healthy kids? Because if you think of yourself as a good dad, as an identity, that's going to give a different response to these kind of scenarios than if you just want to raise healthy kids. So make sure your narrative story makes sense for what you're actually trying to achieve. Because this guy was too attached to his identity and when bad things happened, he reacted even worse. So the advice for you is to take this as a learning experience. And this ties into what's in it for you. These situations, horribly cathartic, a lot of people rubberneck them all the time, they're constantly in the news. What's in it for you is you want to avoid the 5 out of 10 version of this. 
Yes, you're most likely not going to be in the news after your wife leaves you or if your girlfriend leaves you or if she takes the kids, tells them all kinds of horrible things about you. You have to, and I'm not going to say something simple like staying stoic. I think this is past stoicism. You need to understand that flexibility is important. Your kids will be fine. Yes, it really sucks when you get to tuck them in every night and when that's taken away from you. But what really sucks more is where that turns you into a monster. So you have to understand, whatever happens in life, you'll be fine, everybody around you will be fine, and to deal with things as they are, not as how you want them to be. And you're going to know you're falling into this trap when you start talking about what should be. Oh, well, she should have done this. She should have done that. As a man, you're supposed to do this. All those things there are not helpful because they're telling you idealized fantasies. And we already know the problem with fantasies is that when somebody doesn't agree with it, how are you going to react? In this case, don't have fantasies. Just observe your life and adapt accordingly. And when you get better mental models, healthier narrative structures in place, you're going to be far better off in these situations. An alternative, I remember... I was reading a story about uh, Chris Watts. It was almost exactly like this. It was a few years back. And I think it's a great idea, a great breakdown of what an alternative could look like. In his case, absolutely horrible. He drove his family out there, uh, did one of the most heinous acts possible. He's in court right now and they're finding so many revelations about what he had done. But the one thing that was neat, and I was doing this during the research of this, his wife's Facebook page was still exposed and a lot of people were pulling images from it and showing stories. And it showed you the way this stuff kind of progressed. There was at some point about a year before the end of their marriage where the wife started to get in better shape, started to be more active on social media, basically exposing herself to the world saying, hey, I'm gonna be available soon. Time to go, guys. The father really didn't pay attention to any of this stuff and then when the divorce was ultimately dropped on him, he had a year of preparation had to happen in an instant, and he was totally unprepared for this. So what he thought is he had the perfect family life who had troubles and then things were getting better. Meanwhile, her narrative was, I'm getting ready to leave him, but I want to make sure that I'm happy when I do. An alternative to that would have been seeing these warning signs, because divorces, we've had enough now that people kind of know how they work. If your girl starts doing this amazing amount of self-improvement out of nowhere and there's been no changes on your part well the odds are somewhat good that she may be checked out and looking to get herself on best footing when she leaves so as a man you have to be aware of that and mentally prepare yourself if you're not mentally prepared that 12 months down the line when paperwork gets dropped the family gets taken away you aren't in a position to show the courts hey i'm a really good father because you're documenting your child care or you set up whatever you need to do in order to be okay with whatever happens next. And so as an alternative, you really just have to have your head on a swivel and stop thinking about what life should be or what you want people to do and just pay attention to what they're doing and act accordingly. I will end here and I always hate doing these videos because every time I do, people are in the chat and they don't listen. They keep saying, how can you defend this monster? He did this, he did that. The Johnny Depp video is horrible from it. I need to say this and make it explicitly clear. I'm not here to defend somebody who does horrible acts like this. I'm here to use this to understand how we can benefit as a human species by looking at these examples and making sure that the people around us never end up in those circumstances. This is an autopsy and for all intents and purposes, if you're not learning from it and you're just looking at it with some emotional rage or cathartic feelings of validation of whatever your fantasies are, well then that's something you need to look into. But on that note, I'm going to leave you guys to it. Take care.